license capacity is nowhere near what they would typically put on the boat. That's why we use Discovery 2 as well. Both boats have, boats have the same appointments. That includes the very handy snack bars, the gift shop, lots of restrooms on both vessels. Discovery 3 can be taken out of the water with that pipeline dry dock we showed you earlier. Discovery 3 under the command of Captain Skip Binkley this morning. Captain Skip is our senior captain. It was his dad who started the company back in 1950. Commentator on board, my colleague Jay Lewis. And good morning, Discovery 3. I say, have you got any gray poupon? <laughs> You know, this was really like the early days. I mean, the boats would pass like this, they'd yell news across, you know, how are things at the mines, uh, how's the fur traffic going, what's the news from the city, and uh, this is a really historic shot you're getting here. Look at the paddle wheel working there, and that is the story. Now, folks, we are back to the left-hand side here. We're going to stop and have a little conversation on shore with... Parents and lots and lots of cousins that always visit us in fish camp. And when we live at fish camps, we like to stay in canvas waltons like these two back here. Very comfortable to spend a summer in those. We fix them up really nice. Sometimes if it gets chilly at night, we just build a fire in the wall tents. But it's really oh, exciting for the whole family to be able to spend all summer outside, especially after being inside most of the winter. And a smokehouse is pretty much like this little one back here. Other than that, our camp on the Yukon River, very similar to camps on the Tanma today. Oh, so many family members, and I think I see Natalie on shore over there, too. I do, indeed. And uh, so with so many family members on hand, what are some of the, the things you would be teaching in fish camp? Oh, I think this is an excellent time for the whole family to learn many different types of skills. Me and all my sisters, after all the chores are done around camp, of course, and all the salmon's put up in a smokehouse, we would learn how to tan moose hide, caribou hide. We also learn how to do bead work, porcupine quill work, lots of skin sewing, winter clothing. And all these skills we would learn from my mother and also my grandmother. But this is also a good time for my brothers, too. They learn how to build fish wheels, snowshoes, dog sleds, and they learn these skills. This trap line with dog team. He usually kept about 22 dogs plus puppies, and each one of his dogs would eat one dehydrated salmon a day, so you can imagine how much salmon we had to harvest for the whole team for the whole winter's use. And that's not even including the salmon that we harvested for ourselves. But I remember many days my father moving around the fish wheel till he hits a good spot next to the cut bake where the salmon tends to run pretty strong. Some days he would even have to turn off the wheel. We could catch up to a couple hundred salmon a day when we're catching that much salmon. Everybody in camp stays busy. Well, folks, the king salmon arrive in the first week of July in this area. It takes them about 30 days to get here from the Bering Sea. And then we get the chum salmon through the summer, too, and then the silver salmon in the September. So a very short salmon season, but right there, Dixie has a salmon in hand. And Dixie, what kind of salmon is that? This here is a chum salmon. We also have a nickname for these guys. We call them the dog salmon. And the only reason we call them the dog salmon is because they run twice in one season. Therefore, we can catch a lot more of the chum salmon, more so than the kings and the silvers. So it makes sense for us to use these for the dogs. I've seen them get up to 22 pounds. This one here is a little guy. I've seen five or six at the most. Five or six pounds. Now, folks, uh, we've lost television here on the third deck. We'll try and get it back for you. But this will be on TV here momentarily, I hope, with the live shot. And uh, Dixie's going to dress that salmon out for you. It'll go kind of quickly here, less than a month. Starting in front of the tail, she's slicing forward, separating the viscera and the spine from the fillets, leaving the fillets connected at the tail, so it'll hang over the poles of the drying rack of the smokehouse. The head and the back are, uh, spine are removed, and uh, of course that's winter food for the dogs. The viscera and scraps fed to the dogs in summer. She scores the meat diagonally right down to the skin. In about 30 seconds, they fully dress five or six pound salmon. How about that? Uh, Some huge cabbages in here. What we're looking for is things like speed, endurance, strength, intelligence, instinct, curiosity, compatibility, things like that. We're looking more for put sheep up on the roof. That's what I want. And you're walking right by the camera. <laughs> Valley, and this is the heart of Athabascan Indian country. And today, 
sharing with you how the Athabascans have skillfully survived in this environment for the past 10,000 years. Thanks. And the link is very closely related to the bobcat, but there are a few differences. These brown tips on the pointy ears, the short stubby tail, and these huge paws to help it bound across the winter snow. On the other side over here, I do have the silver and also the red box. And both of these are very abundant here in Alaska. And these are also very close related. So you can even find these in the same litter. Although they are crossbred, they are called a cross box. And up in Fort Yukon, Dixie did live in a summer home cabin just like this. And there she learned the skills of sewing and beading. And today, she is a very well-known beadwork and skin sewing artist around the state as well as the nation and Alaskans with nearly everything they needed in order to survive. They used the bones, the meat, and even the liquids. Nothing was wasted. After being tanned, these hides in particular were very valuable because they were used as clothing, shelter, and also lashing. We well, should first start this by scraping off all the flesh and hair using the sharpened shin bones from the moose and also the caribou. Thank you. 